All right, I'm here with uh, Julie Sokolo, uh, the director of Barefoot, the Mark Baumer story. Uh, it is a documentary about Mark Baumer, who uh, at age 33 decided to make a cross-country trek, Barefoot, as the title implies, across America to protest uh, climate change, bring awareness uh, to climate change, and also to raise money for an environmental organization that he was very active with. Um, tragically, and I'm not gonna give anything away except for the fact that, uh, that the story, Mark's story does not end well. Um, however, the legacy that he left behind uh, is I think an important one. So we're gonna talk about Barefoot today. Uh, well, welcome, Julie. Thank you for, for coming on to talk to me about it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Okay. Um, how did you first hear about Mark Bauer? Did you, were you with him from the beginning in terms of knowing about his, uh, his quest or his uh, numerous video blogs that he uploaded to YouTube? Or did you find out about him uh, later after his story became more national news? Yeah, so I was a, a fan of his uh, while he was alive. Um, and uh, a mutual friend uh, was posting about him on Facebook. She went to college with him. And so I you know, saw one of his barefoot across America videos and went to YouTube and immediately connected to his sense of humor, penchant for the absurd. And you know, the New Yorker compared him to Andy Kaufman. And I kind of agree with that, like this sort of, in a way like a Tim and Eric style to some of his videos. Um, and like, I was also feeling that climate change is just the most pressing, daunting issue of our time. So the fact that he could address the issue with levity and bring a new perspective really appealed to me. Uh, and so I was following his walk and then um, basically it was the day after Trump was inaugurated, I heard that Mark had been killed on the walk and was just really devastated uh, by the news, even as someone who never met him. So I reached out to his family and said, you know, let's preserve the, the amazing videos that Mark made and his art and try to tell his life story. And they agreed. And what, how quickly or how soon after did you reach out? I mean, they, they get some, uh, you interview them in the film, uh, the parents, and there's still some raw emotions uh, you know, a few years after he passed away, understandably, but was there any hesitation on your part to approach them or did you give them some time to grieve or how, did, what was that even like for you to uh, think, I think this is an important story to tell, but you know, how do I go about that? Yeah. So uh, when Mark passed, uh, you know, I wanted to give his family the ability to, to grieve and not be bothering them. But then I started to notice that the mainstream media was, you know, picking up on the story and interviewing his parents um, in the weeks after his death. Uh, so it felt like, you know, I, I should probably reach out uh, as soon as possible. So it was in February, it was like a month after he passed that I reached out to his parents and um, the mutual friend that we had kind of vouched for me and the work that I do, which is very like social justice oriented anyway. Uh, and, and then I was out there filming with them in March only, you know, a couple months after he passed. So the emotions were very raw and that comes across in the interviews. So did you film all, how much of the interviews was filmed uh, in March or were you with them over the course of a couple of years? I mean, it looks all pretty much of a piece, uh, or did you sort of do some preliminary interviews and then get to know them over time or, or how did that work? Yeah, so that initial shoot in March, you know, we did sit sit down interviews with his mom and dad that were, you know, a few hours for each. And those are in the film, they're pretty heavily used. Uh, but we kept filming for another year and a half to two years uh, while I had started sort of editing. And then I would realize while editing, okay, I need a little bit more footage and I go back and film with them. So, you know, I think from the first shoot to premiering the film, it was probably about three years of working on it, or actually maybe three and a half. Wow. And were they, uh, were they really engaged this entire time? I mean, the grieving process, you kind of have to figure out how to move on. And yet they're working with you and sort of reliving this a lot. Or did you find that that did they uh, see this sort of therapeutic and a helpful way to to honor their son? 
Yeah, I think that the emotions changed over time. And, and I think I misspoke. I think it was uh, two and a half years from first shoot to premiering the film. And now we're coming around on three and a half years mm. uh, of, of releasing it broadly. But the, the emotions, you know, being with them as it kind of first happened and seeing the rawness of how they felt surrounding, you know, the fact that Mark was killed in broad, day, broad daylight on this walk, um, that the driver had made certain errors, uh, you know, that were, you know, there was a case and I don't want to go too deep into the details of the film, but I think it was just very emotional for them uh, processing how to feel about the driver and about the crash. And I think over time, you know, they've come to be more at peace with things. Uh, and it's been really good to see them do that and to also, you know, establish a foundation in Mark's name, the Mark Bomber Sustainability Fund, and to continue Mark's uh, work and legacy through that. Um, did you make an attempt to reach out to the driver or because, yeah, and I don't want to give anything away either, but there is a not to flattering is the wrong word. It's, it's very hard to, uh, to see a different side to that story. Um, but I'm just wondering if you were able to contact the driver or is there some like legal reason you weren't able to, to mention them? Cause we don't see, I think we learned that it was a woman, but we don't get a name or anything like that. Yeah. We never reached out to her for the film. Uh, and we really decided to minimize that anyway. It's really, not about the crash. It's about Mark's life. It's a character portrait that's very intimate, you know, about him as an artist and uh, and on this walk, the adventure of the walk. So, you know, even though in earlier rough cuts, we did go deeper uh, into the crash and the details and the, the court hearing, um, and we actually had some footage of that, we ultimately decided to really focus on, you know, Mark's activism and the climate change piece, because it was, you know, an obstacle, you know, if you, if you kind of go too far down the path of a court procedural, which it yeah. could have been. Yeah, I, I totally see that. Um, now, as far as uh, the climate change, and, and you mentioned at the top of this, the structure of the film and eerily the structure of fate brought Mark's quest and sort of the end of his life, right in alignment with the rise of Donald Trump and, you know, from his uh, nomination, his running to his nomination, to his election, to his inauguration. Um, and Mark was very outspoken in his uh, disdain for, for Trump and everything he represented. Uh, did he, do you know if in talking to the people who knew him, did he have any feelings about the way previous administrations might have handled uh, climate change or, or not handled climate change? Um, and also, you know, I was thinking about my in-laws while watching this movie because there is a lot of anti-Trump sentiment, right or wrong. I'm just wondering, did you ever think that there might be a certain segment of the audience that might need to be reached that may be turned off by uh, some of what uh, is depicted in the film? Yeah, I've thought about those questions. And, you know, I don't have a, a strong sense of Mark's political leanings as far as, you know, I, I think I wanted to not really go into the nitty gritty of who he supported as a candidate, because it wasn't really about that. You know, the climate change issue is bigger than any sin single politician. Right. And I think, you know, for him, it was he took the issue of protecting the planet so personally that he was vegan and doing composting, putting solar panels on his roof, walking barefoot to be close to the earth, that, you know, any single policy or politician like could never really meet the level of devotion that Mark would require in a sense. But I think that he would be, uh, and I don't want to speak for him, you know, but uh, something like the Green New Deal, the Sunrise Movement, I think uh, he would think is going in a, a good direction. Um, you know, Mark started the walk in October 2016, and as he was walking, you know, he was seeing Trump signs in, in America and saying, you know, maybe he's more popular than we thought, maybe he's going to win this thing. So I think in his YouTube videos, he kind of had to speak to the rise of Donald Trump, even though that wasn't what the walk was about. Uh, it kind of became about that in a way, and we had to include that in the film. So for me, it's more of just part of uh, describing the walk and what it became, 
rather than trying to make this, you know, anti-Trump film, which I, I'm sure some people could could say that, but we've had, you know, surprising amounts of uh, folks who are on the right watch the film and who respect Mark for, you know, his athleticism or his commitment and might not agree with his politics, but they see something in uh, his, his courage or fearlessness that they can connect to. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I wanted, it's kind of a weird segue, but, you know, watching the film, another thing that really struck me was how much I miss being outside among people, not wearing masks, you know, well, I guess I could go to certain areas of the country and have that <laughs> experience now, but uh, just in general, um, you know, we are living in a very different time from when, you know, he went on this walk to even when you were putting this film together over the last few years, what do you think Mark would have made of this time uh, in history? And just as a personal kind of a fan of his, what do you think he would have done about it if he wasn't able to go out and, and do a walk kind of unrestricted like he would have wanted to four years ago? I think he'd still find a way to make art and to, to push boundaries while being respectful of other people because I, I think he would take the pandemic very seriously and mask wearing and all of that and maybe even use that as a creative constraint for an art project or a walk, who knows, yeah. you know? I mean, people thought it was impossible to, to walk barefoot across the country. And, uh, you know, he managed to walk over 700 miles barefoot. And the reason why the walk was stopped was not because of the limits of his feet. It was because of cars, um, you know. And so I think he could potentially have conceived of a, a pandemic walk where he's walking with a mask and still finding ways to at a distance, you know, get the message out there about climate change or something. So, you know, and, and this is me speculating, but, uh I guess that's what I would say. Cool. Yeah, it's because that is something that I was I was conscious of. He had such you know vivid imaginative ideas that I just wondered you know could something like this be a constraint? I mean, there are some segments in the film where he is stopping at a hotel and you know you can tell the trip's kind of wearing on him and uh, he has to stop for longer periods than he would like. At some point, you could see the kind of the isolation getting to him. So um, I'm just uh, was thinking about now we're all kind of isolated in, in various ways and how he might react to that. Um, but one and thing he I was always made this, he had this prolific output online, you know, I never met the guy and yet I was following his YouTube videos, feeling like I knew him through the videos. And so him being at the forefront of all that, you know, being on this walk, blogging, you know, tweeting, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, every single day, this prolific output, I think he would just be doing that to the maximum now. Yeah, how many how many videos do you know did he post on that channel? And did you go through all of them in making the film, or did you just kind of like, oh, I, I've been a fan of his, I know which ones I want to highlight? Yeah, so his YouTube video has around five hundred videos on it, spanning a decade of making work, uh, and those are neat because you can kind of see him experimenting in the beginning. You know, I guess in his twenties with a camera when cameras were not as good and, and more pixelated, you know, up until the barefoot walk where he like really finds his artistic voice. Um, because, you know, in, in the, the videos, he has this persona, which is different than how people describe him in real life. Apparently he was like very quiet. Um, but as far as the barefoot walk, there were a hundred videos uh, documenting the walk, one for every day. And they were three to five minutes each. Uh, totaling around seven hours of, of barefoot walk content. So as the editor, as well as the director, you know, I'm going through all of that footage and watching every video at least once, usually multiple times. Wow. Um, now, as far as uh, we, we've used the term legacy a couple of times in this chat, but I want to know, besides making barefoot, which I think is a is lovely tribute, uh, what has Mark's journey done to you in terms of inspiring you to make a difference uh, moving forward sort of in his honor um, of protecting the planet as far as you see it? Yeah, I think the way that he took the issue of climate change, which is so sort of daunting and we think about policy and how to get to zero emissions and all of these things, but he made it so personal and bodily and, and sort of, you know, by, 
sacrificing, you know, so much on this walk and um, watching the wear and tear on his feet every single day. It just, it makes that connection just more salient. And I guess I just, in my own life, you know, maybe it's a little bit of my own weird brain thing. It's, I'm always thinking about waste and reducing waste and not consuming as much. You know, I, I don't drive, I don't have a car, you know, uh, I don't have any children, you know, if I ever do, it would just be one, <laughs> you know, reduce, that's actually a way to reduce waste. Um, you know, I, I tell people like, I understand not everyone can be a vegan vegetarian. I'm not, but if you can just be more mindful to consume less meat, uh, you know, so these things definitely stick with me. And I, I try to carry forth the more manageable pieces of what you can do on an individual level, um, as well as, you know, getting out there and voting, you know, it, it scares me a little bit when I hear friends or people I respect or anyone say they might sit it out. Uh, Cause mm. I think it's, it's a scary one to sit out in particular. Well, I mean, that's the, that's the thing. I think the, one of the good things about 2020 is you don't hear that many stories now about people sitting it out. It's pretty much, I mean, yes, you'll hear the odds kind of anecdotal stories. Cause yeah, I know some people are like either undecided or like, I don't know, but mostly the national conversation is strictly partisan. Like they're going to go out and vote for somebody. Uh, so I guess that's, that's encouraging. Yeah. And you know, uh, I, I, love Bernie Sanders and, you know, in 2016 and, and with more recent times too, was supporting him. And I understand, you know, I had uh, friends or acquaintances who were Bernie or bust and I'm just like, we can't afford that. You know, we have to be able to compromise. So. Yeah. Well, we're well, definitely living in interesting times. And I think one of the cool things about this film is it does speak to the ability of just everyday people to get up and do something um how effective that is you know at least try and and you know try and make a difference um so yeah i it's a very inspiring story uh it's a sad story <laughs> uh but i think it's something that uh, that people can really latch on to and uh yeah, take away a lot of lessons. So congratulations on the film. Thank you again for, for talking with me about it. And uh, yeah, best of luck in, uh, in getting this out there. Thanks so much. All right, take care. <laughs> Bye.